Hello! Wait, I'm not finished. Oh, still not done. Oh, you fine upstanding people of the internet tube. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks for asking. And thanks also for watching yet another tiny wee history lesson courtesy of me, Ancient Swan, and this map made by me, Ancient Swan, via this game, Cities Skylines 2. Not made by me, but I'm sure we can all agree we should all give thanks for it anyway. Let's take a second to give thanks to Finland for giving us this game. Okay, that was the second. I hope you took part. And on to the map. What do we have today? Well, beautiful ladies and gentle bots, right now your eyes are looking at the famous city of Boston, USA. But not as it looks today, but as it once looked in the year 1630. That's right. Boston. Now you may be thinking to yourself, but Ancient Swan, your maps are all based on history, massive changes in the landscape or cities long gone. So why is this one included? Why? I'll tell you why. Here's why. Looking at a map of modern-day Boston, you might have no idea how drastically the area has changed in the last few hundred years. Since the colonists arrived, centuries of land reclamation efforts have made Boston and its surrounding land almost twice as big as it once was. Boston is quite unrecognizable from its past. This is Boston, AD 1630. You see this photo in front of your eyes right now. This is how the land of Boston City looks today. But this is how it looked before Europeans arrived. A massive portion of the modern city sits on man-made land. When the Puritans arrived in 1630, most of the land we now see did not yet exist. Those Puritans settled on a small peninsula named Shamut. It was given this name by the natives who lived there originally, but quickly ran away once they saw a Puritan heading over, which I'm sure we can all agree is perfectly understandable. The Charmot Peninsula was originally less than 800 acres and was connected to the mainland by a wee strip of land that became submerged during high tide. This made the peninsula a very defendable area, something incredibly important in those days. However, as Boston grew in size, that small defensive peninsula quickly found itself struggling for space. Not only space for the ever-growing population from Europe, but for new technologies too. Boston wanted rail lines and a rail station, and that needed land. It also wanted to improve its harbours to increase maritime trade. This also needed land. And parks. People love parks. Parks need land. There were lots of reasons for expanding the city of Boston, and almost all of them needed more land. And so some of the nearby hills were cut down and the land was moved into the sea. Bunker Hill no longer exists. Neither does Breeds Hill or Beacon Hill. Not all of the land reclamation was deliberate, though. On more than one occasion, a dam was built, not only to help control the tide, but to also build water mills, which could then use that tide for things such as grinding flour. Which is great until the mills stop being used, and suddenly rubbish and crap starts building up behind those dams, leading to the inevitable filling in with more land. Hey, look! Guys, we've stopped using that dam, and now those tidal flats are filling up with soil and rubbish. Quick! Build a neighbourhood over it and fill it with desirables before the Irish move in. And so, that's what happened also. And this is why Boston's Back Bay is no longer a bay. It's a whole other new part of the city. Modern Boston now contains more than 5,000 acres of man-made land. But this map returns the area to how it was originally before the English arrived to teach nature a lesson. This is how Boston looked 400 years ago, including the Shawmut Peninsula and Breeds Hill and Beacon Hill and all the rest. As always, this map was made to reimagine history. What if the English had never arrived to teach nature a lesson? What if the natives had told the Puritans to foff and build their houses somewhere else? What if the bays had never been filled in? What if the hills had been left where they were? How might Boston look today? Well, if you'd like to know, then you can follow the link below, download the map and build your city to find out. And now for the important bit, la map information. However, before we look at that, I must take the opportunity to remind you that for each one of you who doesn't subscribe, 
My wife sticks pins through my eyelids and kicks a voodoo doll of me down the stairs. She also puts my hands into warm water while I sleep and then blames me for pissing the bed. Please God, please subscribe just to make her happy and save me from this torture. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, I, the map info. Look, do you see it? It's very informative, isn't it? It has a climate, some hot, some cold, and an area too, and some connection stuff, and then stuff about trees and more stuff. I would read it to you, but to be honest, I can't be bothered. Read it yourself, you lazy wet wipe. There's terrain too, something, something, flat something. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed yet another tiny wee history lesson. Be sure to come back next time. You know it's the only thing keeping me alive. Thank you. Peace, love, and thank God the Puritans left my country for yours. Cheers. Good. Bye.